lutador do Arkansas, Bryce Mitchell, fala sobre o que significa ser um lutador que nasceu e cresceu na mesma cidade. Giga Shikadze, especialista no boxe, detalha seus golpes mais letais. Henry Hooft fala sobre sua carreira como treinador. O invicto peso pena Bryce Mitchell construiu seu nome representando suas raízes do sul dentro do octógono. Bryce atribui seu sucesso ao fato de ser um lutador que nasceu e cresceu na mesma cidade, que apoia totalmente seu estilo de vida único e a sua estrutura de treino. Visitamos o local de treinamento do Mitchell em Circe, Arkansas, para entender melhor seu amor pela terra da oportunidade, em foco de lutador. Arkansas, I like living out here. It's real peaceful. I couldn't have the cows and the goats and the chickens and the pigs and stuff that I wanted if I lived in the city. I might not have been to like bigger gyms, but I've got just as good of a shot of being a world champion as anybody from any gym anywhere. I attribute my success to where I'm from and how I was raised. Fighting out of Cersei, Arkansas, Bryce the Nasty Mitchell! Oh, oh big left from Thug Nasty! Hell yeah, man, that's what we do in Arkansas. Bryce Mitchell, he has incredible pride for training out of his small town, Searcy, Arkansas. Now he's supposed to be here, he's out from Arkansas. Arkansas ain't worth the <laughs> They told me I have to leave Arkansas and rework something. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm gonna say Arkansas. Every day I wake up, I eat some coffee, grind, and get going. Water the dogs, the cats, and the chickens, and feed them. I call this Chicken City right here. This is the grand opening of Chicken City. They're gonna have a little slide, they're gonna have a pool, jump into the pool, I guess like a diving board. <laughs> What you're about to see is some of the biggest okra you've ever seen in your damn life. You'll see me out there picking and eating a bunch of it. Some of it won't even make it to the bag. My buddies start calling me homegrown, just like the okra out there. I'm homegrown. I do firmly believe in what you eat is what you are. Watermelons, I love them, but they're not going to get you big. You know, they're not going to really get you through a winter. Okra will. Okra will get you through the winter. I have no idea what is in the okra, but it's crunchy and it's delicious. Julius is my buddy. I've known him since I got to Harding. He's my boxing coach. <coughs> you know, he does everything truly off the grid. He's a true country trainer. Everything is engineered toward him winning, toward him being an athlete. He keeps my mind real sharp. It's not always scheduled. He'll just show up sometimes. Sometimes I'll just pull in and he'll pull this train. When I come out here, he comes to work. I'm training here all the time when nobody's looking. I got a log out there that I curl and then I lift it over my head and then I run in a circle and then I'll fill up the wheelbarrow with dirt and push it around. The number one reason I won't go to a big gym is because of the secrecy. Your plants need to be dark as night. This is how we do it. First time I met Bryce, he was 16 years old. I had a gym in Cabot, Arkansas, where he lived. And uh, he walked in with his mom, trains with us, has a blast, gets back up, tells his mom he wants to join the gym. She signed him up that night, and he's been with me ever since. He acknowledged that he didn't know his dad. And I said, well, just coincidence, I don't know my dad either. So it really clicked. Why is he getting his look? <laughs> I'm bringing you down with me. Entertainment. <laughs> Willie's probably the closest thing I've ever had to a dad. He's just always there to talk to me if I want to talk or hang out. 
Bryce, he is like my son. I call him son, he calls me pops. Uh, I'll support him as a dad. I treat him just like my other boys. Willie has taught me more than anything how to use the full power of your mind and to prepare it for battle. And sometimes I'm training too much, and he says, you need to go to the river and just go fishing, go ride your four-wheeler, do something. That's been one of the sentiments he repeats, is that he says that your life is important besides fighting. Yeah, I really like coming out here because it's just real relaxing. One day I'll just be a retired old geezer and that's all that I'm gonna do, so I'll be fine. Bryce represents the average normal Joe out there who's looking to make it and feels like they possibly never could unless you go to the big gyms. 24-7, you're gonna catch him acting the same damn way. He does not change for nobody. Bryce Mitchell told me, I don't know how I'm gonna win the fight. I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's Bryce in a nutshell, though. A guy that just goes after it. Y'all gonna have to kill me or make me some camo shorts because I ain't shutting up till then. Bryce Mitchell wasn't real. You couldn't make him up. I do this for you. People tell him, you need to move. You need to go one of the big camps. And he says, I'm staying right at home in Arkansas. These other people that train in other places, they have their particular style. You know, I have mine, and it's different it's probably gonna become more popular. We're probably gonna see more and more fighters not coming out of big gyms, coming out of the middle of nowhere because of that element of secrecy. That's it, Bryce. That's it. Get it. Make it happen. Four, game. Make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen. That's tight. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Bryce Mitchell. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's all nasty. Just the second twister in UFC history. I love my family. I love my friends. I love my teammates, I love my coaches, I love God, and I love Arkansas. The amount of support that I've got from people here is pretty crazy. There's a lot of people around here that like what I'm doing. I just know that they want me to go on big champion, and I can't wait to do it. I want more than anything to sell out that Simmons Arena in Little Rock, Arkansas. It will be full, every damn seat. And there'll be people sneaking in, standing in between the aisles, and you'll have to kick them out. Because I'm telling you, my people will fill that stadium up. When it's all said and done, the goal is to get everybody to watch, and then at the end of it, be able to give back something. You know, so it's not you're not just fighting for yourself, you're gonna be fighting for something else. A lot of younger people are getting in the sport around here. And they're gonna see a guy like me. And they're going to say, wow, look at this guy who trains on his farm, and look what he's done. If you build it, they will come. I'm building it, and they're going to come. Faixa preta de Karate Giga Shikaze chegou deixando um rastro de destruição na divisão dos penas desde que ingressou no UFC em 2019. Sua habilidade única no boxe, desenvolvida ao longo de sua carreira no kickboxing, se propagou no octógono. Com nocaute sob especialistas na luta em pé como Edson Barbosa e Cub Swanson, o Jordiana agora é considerado como um dos melhores da divisão. Giga fala sobre algumas de suas técnicas favoritas nessa edição do Marca Registrada. Giga Chicaze! You're gonna get some wild world-class striking heading your way. So much snap on those shots, it really is beautiful. That's the karate style of Giga, who can kick you, head kick you, liver kick you. You can tell this is something he did for a long time and was very good at it. I started to train karate when I was four, and I spent many, many years in this style. When I was like 17, 18, I moved to Netherlands to learn Dutch style of kickboxing. I still use the same moves in UFC fights. So many different kicks in the arsenal. That's his famous kick right there. You just melt people with that left kick. My style is aggressive, entertaining, and explosive. Wow! Chikaze with style points tonight! I'm Giga Chikaze, and this is my signature series. 
First move, step knee. I love step knee because uh, I always surprise my opponents. They think it's going to be their jab or cross, and then I'm following it with my right knee. To land the step knee, you need to have a karate stance, with a little bit wide stance, and you need to have a distance. Tap a little bit with your left leg, and just to lift your right knee as high as you can. You can cause huge damage to his body. Once you hit the body, I can see that he's hurt, and then I can go and finish the guy. Nice knee to the body. Boom! Oh, my goodness. Jokaze just hammered away. Wow. Yeah, do it. This move is great for wrestling defense. So if he shoots for takedown, my knee going to land right in the forehead. I remember I used the step knee against Irwin Rivera. Irwin tried a couple of times to shoot, to take me down. I felt that he was gonna start shooting takedown. So I stepped in and landed my left knee in the face. Oh! oh big knee! Kiki Chikadze, beautiful work. Next up, the overhand right. Overhand right is very important move in my style because I have a very strong power in my right hand. My overhand right comes from karate background. Now I'm using this in MMA. Most of the time I'm doing this move when my opponent does a jab. While he moving forward, slip a bit and throw the overhand. You generate all power from your body. It's like a wave which goes all into your fist. When I'm throwing my overhand, I'm aiming his head. Doesn't really matter where this is gonna land, but if it lands at the chin, I know this is gonna be the knockdown or finish. Boom! Big right hand by Giga. Drops him. I used this against Omar Morales in the third round. I knew he was going to come with a jab. So while he's jabbing, I'm stepping with my left foot, doing my overhand, and it lands perfectly. Oh, massive right hand. That's when your opponent goes down. He's hurt. Keegan looking for the finish. And finally, Giga kick. Giga kick is my signature move that I used to use in karate, in kickboxing. That's the liver kick in the body. The pain of the kick is a little bit different. You get hit and it's kind of delay pain. His energy, his cardio, his power is not going to be the same as it was a minute ago. Huge shock in the body. To land this kick, I switch my orthodox stance to south pole. Range is very important. I'm staying outside distance and moving right side before I land my giga kick. Power of the giga kick comes from the hips. The best part of the foot to land is the last part of your foot, close to the toes. Whip the kick, hit the lever. You might need to test your opponent to find the right part of the lever. I throw a couple of body kicks. I'm gonna throw a couple of high kicks. And then I start to land the jab. When I realize that my opponent is covering his head, then I move a little bit right side and throw my body kick to the lever. Oh, that was a good body kick. With the Cub, he was very aggressive. He was pushing the fight. Cub's trying to close the distance. I tested Cub with my left switch high kick from the orthodox stance. 
I switch and stayed in a south pool from there. Then I did the left straight, and once I come back, he was moving forward. Then I stepped my right leg, right side, and did the giga kick right in the liver. Oh, there it is! That's the giga kick! I knew that fight was already done. Trying to fight through it! Now we'll pounce on him, cover it up! Giga Chikaze! Cub experience full power of a Giga Kick. This prospect has officially arrived. I'm Giga Chikaze, and that was my signature series. O treinador principal da Sanford MMA, Henry Ruft, treinou grandes campeões ao longo de sua extensa carreira. Por ser um ex-lutador, o holandês sabe exatamente o que é preciso para ter sucesso dentro do octógono e tem satisfação em despertar o melhor em seus atletas. Henry compartilhou suas experiências no corner de treinador. I think a good coach is a coach that leads by example in the gym. That's it, so thank you going. Keep going. Keep going. Works hard, gives the full attention to all the people in the gym. You want to push him, hip, push him, hip short. Boom. I know it's not a team sport when you step in the cage, but the whole preparation, everything is all about the group of people that you have. So I think it's very important for a coach to create the right environment so all these guys can fulfill their dreams. My career started uh, very early when I was young. I became world champion and slowly transformed from fighter to trainer. I came over to the United States with one of my fighters to help Rashad Evans out for his fight. The gym at that time, it was called the Black Zillions. We came there and we saw people sparring and we thought to ourselves, this is not sparring, this is just moving around each other. And we just started sparring, we started beating everybody up. We changed the way that's part, and that gym went on a very big streak. Everybody got better there. And... One, two, three! The Black Genius kind of fell apart. We started a new gym, Sanford MMA. I just wanted to do my own thing, create my own little crew. It grew very quickly. Other people joined. I am a guy that wants to train everybody, but there are certain fighters that you have a special bond with. Kamaru Usman, he was the guy. Very talented from the start, really. If somebody in my group at that moment would become champion, it was Kamaru. And that's what we want to do with our program. We want to create a champion. Fight night is special. When you're in your room, that's where it really starts. Commission is there, you got your gloves, and we get ready to fight. We start warming up. That's the closest thing for me as an old fighter. I feel that at that moment, I feel I'm still fighting. Let's go, Michael. But when I stay behind my fighter, behind the curtain, it, it feels like showtime for me too. That's special. It's a special moment. Our main event is here. Enter the number one contender representing Sanford MMA. All those guys down with Henry Hoop at Sanford MMA are all showing so much improvement. Henry Hooft, of course, the calling card is keeping it simple. In the fight, you don't have a lot of options. Everything happens so fast that you need to have a limited space in your head. Touch and go! Touch and go! That, yeah, touch and go! Instead of putting it full with information, you need the right information that you can use at the right time. Body kick, one body kick is enough, man. And he stumbles on the way back. Gotta be careful there. The kick by Vitor. It's simple, repetition, believe, trust. Oh, nice counter strike there, Michael Johnson. If you know your fighter, it's not hard, really. It clicks when he's in the ring or in the cage and he looks at you in the eyes. Relax, relax, hey, relax, your hands up, relax. You trust him, he trusts you, you know what to say to some people. Rockhold's just got perfect position. There it is! Rockhold stops David Branch in round two! Everybody's a little different, you know, and so you need to make adjustments all of the time. 
I talk differently to Michael Johnson than I talk to Gilbert. Five minutes, right? Game Let's time. Game play. time, boy. Game time, boy. The only thing you can do now is fight with your heart. You need to give everything. This guy needs to get out of here. It's also hard when you see a fight slip away. Good work! Good work! You need to move your feet! No! Oh! Huge run from Bohovic! And you don't have the contact anymore with the fighter. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that with him. No, you see? This should be it. Michael should tap. Hit it all over! Losing a fight is really losing. Painfully losing, so that's hard. Chandler is down! Chandler's in real trouble! A fighter that lost gets in a very lonely place. It's very hard to talk to a fighter that just lost. Slowly, slowly, his mind, his emotions get right, and then hopefully you get that little look, and he looks at you and it's okay, you know? And then, of course, when you win, it's all great. Yes, that's it, Mike. Oh! oh! Big knockdown for Michael Chandler! Oh, 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 it's up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Whoa! If it's a beautiful knockout or something, that's my department, of course. It's something that you train and it works. It's, it's amazing, you know? That's it. Correct That's down. it. He tasted the knockout life. They win a hard win fight. I'm happy that they can fight 15 minutes hard or 25 minutes hard and dominate. Impressive performance for the lower ranks, but favorite fighter here in Kamaru Usman. But to be successful, I think the trust, dedication from a fighter, yeah, you can build something special. The fight, Kamaru for the title, it's just great to be in the corner with a guy like that because it makes it easy for you. I never had any doubt that this could go any other way than Kamaru dominating him. Tyron Woodley and Kamaru Usman. Good right hand by Usman. Oh, oh, he hit Tyron with a big elbow. We had that bond that we look each other in the eyes and we knew what was going to happen. Look at him. Come on, let's go. Let's go. For Henry Hooft and Rashad Evans, they felt like their guy was going to break through and eventually win a UFC title. Oh, big of a cut. Usman. Oh, he's hurt bad. Willie's in trouble here. Big uppercuts. The end could be coming. This is the most dominant we have ever seen anyone against Tyron in a fight for the title. Kamala Usman has done it. We go home. That moment when the fight was over, I thought to myself, yes, yeah, true, right? We have a champion here. And new! We did it. I, I feel good now, you know, we did it. The first time you win a belt, it's surreal first. And then later on, you start thinking about it and think, oh, I did what I really wanted to do when I came to America. My big drive is to build that team to become one of the biggest and best teams in MMA, that I can look back at something that we all change each other's lives. It's a hard way to earn a living, but it's also a very, very beautiful way to live a life, you know? So that's my goal. Create champions, change each other's lives. One, two, three, go! Oh! Chegamos ao fim desse episódio. Entre em contato com a gente e compartilhe sua opinião online usando a hashtag Conexão UFC. Até a próxima!